Have you ever wanted to use 3D printing and lasers together, but don't know what kind of projects you could make? Or can you even laser on a 3D printed object? I've done all the testing and let's say things got a little interesting in more ways than one. Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made and today I am combining 3D printing and lasers to see what kind of unique projects we can create. Have you ever wondered what happens when these two technologies come together? Because today I am going to show you my experiments and how they took some surprising turns. So let's go ahead and get into it. So today I am going to be testing out the F1 laser which Xtool sent me to try out. Now, I've used laser cutters and engravers before, but typically with larger industrial sized machines, like the one I use to make my textured paint palettes and my PSI rangefinders. But this little guy is compact, portable, and honestly very user friendly. So I was curious to see how it stacks up against the laser engravers that I've used, and I found that the F1 is just built for speed and precision. With dual lasers for metal and non-metal materials, I was genuinely surprised when I opened the box. They included so many sample materials to test on, and of course, before I started my real project, I had to test it out, and I engraved just about everything. That's when I really got to see the speed of this thing. It's a lot faster than my larger laser cutter, and watching it in action, it's almost hypnotic. To get going, you have to use their software, Xtool Creative Space, which has a super user-friendly interface. I usually work with a program called Lightburn, which has a bit of a learning curve, but the Xtool Creative Space had me up and cutting within minutes. So even if you're brand new to laser engraving, this software makes it easy to get up and running quickly. One thing I was concerned about initially was the smoke that this could produce. My large laser has a vent system that blows the smoke outside. So when I set these tests up, I did it in my garage, just in case. When I was lasering, there was a bit of an odor, and it wasn't overpowering. And also, there wasn't any kind of smoke just billowing out the back that I thought might happen. So then I tried the optional air purifier and I noticed it cut out both odor and smoke output and it was a really nice surprise. I still recommend using it in a well ventilated area for extra peace of mind, but it's great to know that it's manageable even in a small space when you're using this air purifier. So once I figured all of this out, I took it into the workshop to get started on a project. For my first real project, I thought I'd have a little fun and create some coasters that combine 3D printing and laser engraving. I had some cork coasters lying around, so I figured why not engrave them with some kind of cool 3D printing infill pattern. So I designed the patterns in Adobe Illustrator, popped them into Xtool Creative Space, then lined everything up, and then just let the laser do its magic. After the coasters were engraved, I jumped into Tinkercad and then whipped up some holders to keep the cork coasters organized. And I even made a little stand to store them all together. After that, it was as easy as just exporting the STLs and then throwing them in Bamboo Studio and I printed them on my bamboo printers. It was a super fun and easy project that came together perfectly and now I can prevent these coffee rings from forming on my table. Look at that. After wrapping up my first successful project, I was left with the ultimate question. Can I engrave on a 3D print? That's what I really wanted to find out. So I went into Bamboo Studio and created a cube primitive. Then I just scaled it down to make a nice little test square. And I printed these in three different colors with Inland PLA. The first one was black. Then I did a bluish, like turquoise color. And then I used white. And I did three different colors because I was curious to see if the colors would be affected by the laser and to see if these would just genuinely work. Now this part was a bit of an experiment and I was genuinely curious about the results. So a cool feature in the Xtool Creative Space is that it will let you do a test array with a bunch of different little squares at different laser powers and speeds to see what will work on the material you're engraving on. And unlike 3D printing, which has dozens of different variables, laser engraving really only has two big variables. That's speed and laser power. And this makes testing just a lot easier. So I started with the black square, and it took a few tries to get the laser adjusted just right. And that's when I d 
All right, disclaimer. If you attempt to do this, do it with caution and don't ever leave the laser unattended while it's running because we're dealing with lasers here and lasers can catch things on fire. All right, now that I've got that disclaimer out of the way, let's get back to the story. And that's when I caught the 3D print on fire. Yup. It took me a second to realize there was a flame that was going on in there, but it was kind of hard to see with that green screen, but I quickly hit the emergency stop button, patted the print down with a paper towel to snuff out the flame since it wasn't really that big. And yeah, it was a tiny fire, but yeah, still, I it was a fire. So uh, ultimate lesson, you can't go at 100% power at a super slow speed. I ultimately got it dialed in and realized around 250 to 350 millimeters a second at 100% power gave a really nice clean result. So once I got that, then I moved on to the blue turquoise color. And the one thing I noticed that I had to slow down to like 200 millimeters a second to get a good result, but I did get it and it was at 100% power. So once I had my two successful tests, I moved on to the white PLA, and this is where I started to get really confused. I tried it at 200 millimeters a second, and nothing, no burn or anything. So then I slowed it down to 100 millimeters a second at full power, and still, nothing. It didn't engrave, burn, melt, or anything. The print wasn't even hot. So that's when I brought it down to 50 millimeters a second speed, and 100% power. And then, surprisingly, nothing. I mean, nothing. I couldn't understand it. So that's when I thought, okay, let's slow this thing down as much as it can go at 10 millimeters a second and 100% power. And keep in mind, that is the speed where the PLA black caught on fire. So I started it up and had my hand ready on the emergency stop button. But once again, nothing. I couldn't engrave on the white PLA in any way. So that's when I reached out to my buddy that got me into laser engraving and he told me that some materials just don't laser due to the laser wavelengths. I looked it up and he was right. You can't laser certain materials due to the laser wavelengths passing straight through the material or reflecting off of them. Science. <sighs> Who would have thought? But that explained why my 3D print wasn't even warm after blasting it with the laser. So once I had all my data and realized white is pretty much out of the question, I was ready for my real project. And I've always had it in the back of my mind to create 3D printed business cards, so I thought it would be a good time to try it out. I went into Bamboo Studio and created a primitive shape that was only four layers thick, two layers of green, and two layers of black. And it was the size of a business card. So once I got those 3D printed, I designed my cards in Adobe Illustrator. Then I ran down to the studio to create my first set of Mead made business cards. I wasn't sure what I wanted for the front or back, so I did both. One side with my logo and the other side with my contact information on both colors. I did the black first because I knew my settings and I figured it would work great with a black logo. So once I had my Mead Made logo on the back of the black side of my business card, I flipped it over to the green side and that's when the next surprise came about. I used the same settings for the blue since it was a lighter color and when I pulled it out of the laser, I, I, I just did not expect this. The laser made the green blue or like a turquoise. I figured the heat had something to do with changing the color of the green and I thought, it was still kind of cool, so I just went with it. But overall, I think it was a pretty successful project, even though with the surprising color change. Now I can honestly say I have 3D printed business cards. Not sure who I'm going to give them to, but it's cool to say that I have them. So there you have it. We have went from making 3D printed infill coasters to testing laser settings on PLA and creating custom 3D printed business cards that are laser engraved. And I learned a few things along the way, like how not to set a 3D print on fire. That was an important one. Combining 3D printing and laser engraving opened up so many new possibilities. Even if it did get a little heated at times. <laughs> that pun was totally intended. As makers, there are so many tools out there that we can add to our arsenal to take our projects to the next level. And this is just one of those examples of what's possible. So I'd like to thank Xtool for sending me this laser to just play with. 
And if you're interested in about learning more about the X-Tool F1 laser and other lasers, I'll go ahead and put the information down below for you. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you a great day. And I'll go ahead and I'll see you over here in this video.